Algonquin and Lemonster in boys soccer, they know they've had some tremendous teams. They've had some tremendous players as well. A lot of chippiness in this game, but not really pointed towards each other. More the anger was pointed towards the referee. So let's show you all the highlights from this one. And we pick it up in the second half. It's a 2-1 Algonquin lead. Algonquin's Jared Bull with a great move. He fires, and Connell McBride saves a goal. That is great, great play by the defender. Bull then hammering one on, and Holvin Nieves with the save. Fagundo Cotto with the cross to Andrew Sanchez. Sanchez buries it. And we've got ourselves a tie game at 2-2. Lemister's excited. Sebastian Royo on the free kick. Nick Casapula with the header and the goal. Algonquin's pumped. They're back in the lead. It's 3-2. And the T-Hawks holding serve at home. They win it 4-2. Your final. So nice, we showed it twice. Nipmuc and Northbridge in field hockey this afternoon. First half scoreless game. Jill Carey feeds a teammate for Nipmuc. The shot and Carson Flanders the save. And then Flanders kicking it away. Nipmuc on the penalty corner. Northbridge with some good defense blocking it. Bailey diving, trying to deflect it in, but it's a no-go. Nipmuc with the shot. Flanders the save. Carey fires in the Rams D, blocking it up. Second half, they continue to pressure. The shot on, and Flanders with a great save. Nipmuc with some good passing. Lindsay Spindle for the Warriors, weaving through traffic. Beautiful shot. She scores to make it 1-0 Nipmuc, and Nipmuc goes on to win this one. 2-0 is your final. Holy Cross football team is home this Saturday for the first time this season. They have played their first three games on the road. They are hosting Dartmouth at Fit and Field on Saturday. They're happy to be back in the friendly confines of Fit and Field, playing at home, and also after two tough losses in a row, they're looking for a win. First of all, it seems like it's been a real long time. Um, it's, uh, it's mid to late September, and we haven't played at home, so it's, it's exciting to get to play at home in front of the home, home crowd and uh, um, you know, just not to have to be on the road. Uh, and it also seems like you know, we've progressed fairly, uh, you know, through a fairly big chunk of the season already. So you know, we've been road warriors for the last uh, three weekends and uh, after four weeks of preseason camp. So it's going to be really exciting for us to play at home for the very first time. You know, there, there's, you know, after the loss was a lot of frustration and disappointment, but a, a, a lot of commitment to get refocused on what we need to do to improve. There's a lot of confidence in the team and the coaching staff that we, we can be better. Uh, we did play two good programs the last two weeks, and both of them were nationally ranked when we played them. So it's not like uh, we lost to bad teams, but we didn't perform up to our potential, and that's why we're disappointed in ourselves. Um, so, you know, that's the point of emphasis. You know, we got to go out and work all that much harder and making sure that we're playing to our potential. And uh, I think when we do that, you know, we can beat anyone on our schedule. All right, so Holy Cross hosting Dartmouth on Saturday at home, and we will have the game right here on Charter TV 3. We will kick off our live coverage from Fitton Field beginning at 1 in the afternoon. Saders and Dartmouth. Dartmouth is a very good team coming in. They have uh, beaten UNH. So they will be coming in on a roll. They'll be coming in with some confidence, playing just their second game of the season, too, which is kind of you always have that debate with the, uh, with the Ivy League teams because they start so late. They play late. Maybe they don't have the game experience early in the season, but what they do have is a fresh team. They don't have a team that's banged up and beat up. And right now, Holy Cross dealing with some injuries and some bumps and bruises. So they're getting a fresh team coming at them. And, uh, but the home cooking helps. It certainly helps when you're in your own bed on a Friday night and you're not traveling and not waking up somewhere else, and uh, hopefully they can get a big win this weekend. Good to see a game at Pitt and Field this season, too. I mean, you always see in the summer, it's right across from uh, where the Braves. Yeah, playing, exactly. So it's it's, it looks great. They've done even a, a better job. I thought last year they did a good job with some of the trapings in the tra around the, the field, but I think it looks even better this year, and uh, hopefully they can get that big win. That's what they need. Just get a win and then get some momentum rolling in as they get ready to start the league season. And we got the Frenzy Extra this week, right? Frenzy Extra debuts tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, the Frenzy Extra is back. Can we get a preview or is it uh, so We have to keep that uh, okay. contractually. Okay. I cannot say anything. Okay. I, I asked Charter a, TV3 uh, lawyers 
are out there. I ask the tough questions here. So. Yes, yes, you do. Kevin Shea, thank you very much. That'll do it for us tonight for Worcester News Tonight. For Kevin Shea, all of us here, thank you for tuning in tonight. We hope you'll tune in again tomorrow at 6. Thank <laughs> you.